Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. Today's episode of Research Hour by Infinite Research Institute is going to be geared on discussing what literature review is. And so for today's episode, we are going to look at what literature review is. We are going to also look at the objectives of literature review, as well as the styles or approach involved in conducting a literature review. The understanding we can derive from literature review is that in every research study, or in every study that you are doing, mm -hmm. mind you, we have different categories of studies. Sometimes students are interested in writing articles, journals, theses, dissertations, and so on and so forth. For the purposes of our discussion today, we are going to look at reviewing literature for students of undergraduate level as well as those in the graduate level. And so we are going to look at these forms of literature review as far as these levels of education is concerned. Now what we mean by literature review is just, as the name suggests, is just to review existing documents, existing publications, existing articles, papers, journals, what have you. As long as that document is published or unpublished, there's a way we can reference these documents to back up our study. Research is conducted based on different topics that is of interest to the researcher. And so in conducting a literature review, there, there's the need for students to understand what is meant by in-text citation. So you are going to reference documents or materials that you are using to conduct the study. And so, for example, if someone is conducting his or her research in the field of menstrual hygiene, it would be important for that person to understand what previous scholars have done in the field of menstrual hygiene. And so, for example, let's say that Karim Abdel Jalil conducted a similar research on menstrual hygiene to some groups of women in a Tamil metropolis. By virtue of this, if I also want to conduct a similar research, but, but naturally what we expect is that the research shouldn't just be exact as what Karim Abdel Jalil did. But we expect that you make references to publications that were done by other researchers in previous years. And so, for example, what Karim Abdul Jalil published was done in the year 2010. And so, in the course of the literature review, you can cite according to according to Abdul Jalil, we are taking the surname. We are not relying on the la I mean, uh, the first names. We are relying on the same names. And so we are going to quote. You also can quote by saying that, according to Abdul Jalil, in brackets, 2010, menstrual hygiene means this, in that order. That is how you are going to rely on documents upon documents to back up your study. But this naturally has to also go along with your objectives. Mind you, you have your own objectives of your study. And so by virtue of the fact that you are relying on other previous uh, uh, documents or publications, you have to also ensure that you have your objectives that aligns or that looks somewhat similar to what other previous scholars have done. Now, we have reasons why we do literature review. One is to identify the gaps by previous scholars. And so naturally every researcher cannot fulfill all the research uh, uh, I mean, requirements. What I mean by this is to say that every research has its own critique. 
And so if you review existing documents, existing literature about what other previous scholars have done, you understand that they all had their critics. And so by virtue of these critics, you see that there's a gap. And that gap may help you to also redefine your objective for your study. In conducting literature review, it also gives you a clear understanding as to what goes into your objectives. It can help you to review your objectives. It can also help you to ensure that you design your data collection instrument as far as your study is concerned. Now, as I indicated earlier, we have different approaches or style of literature review. We have conceptual review, we have empirical review, and then we also have theoretical review. These are different styles, and it also depends on the type of research or paper that you want to publish. If you want to publish an article, there's a specific type of review you have to use. If you are using, you are going to, uh, I mean, develop a, a thesis or dissertation, this, all, all these publications has its own standard of the type of review you can use. But for the purposes of the thesis for undergraduate and master's level, you can blend all three, all three stars. And so we are going to look at what it means by conceptual review. We conduct conceptual review in research. Now, every, uh, every topic has its own concepts. You have, as I said earlier, let's look at the menstrual hygiene. Karim Abdel Jalil worked on menstrual hygiene of girl, uh, let, let's say, of teenagers within the Tamil metropolis. You realize that we have different variables in this topic. And so for conceptual framework, we, for example, by virtue of this topic, we are going to understand what, is mean, what, what it means by menstrual hygiene. Along the line, we can also come up with certain concepts that were discovered in the course of reviewing other scholars' works. And so we can have menstrual hygiene, we can have what it includes when we talk about the stages involved in menstrual cycle. All these concepts can be developed depending on how the review is done. And so there are three different ways in which you can conduct conceptual review. One, we have clarification and definition of key concepts. And so by this, you are going to examine. So you pick the concept, you understand the meaning, and research has to be backed by facts or evidence. And so when you say menstrual hygiene, what does it mean? You have to reference it. So you say according to Mr. A, according to this dictionary, according to this, according to that. Menstrual hygiene means this. That is the first thing to consider. The second thing to consider is to look at the historical narrations of that concept. When did that concept emerge? When did it become popular? How did it metamorphosize over the course of time? This is not the first time we have heard of menstrual hygiene. So our, by this, we are going to look at history. How? Who even developed the concept of menstrual hygiene? What goes into it? How did it transform? And so on and forth. Thirdly, we are also now going to look at the stat uh, statistical or the situational analysis of these concepts. So these are the three things that you have to consider. So first is clarification and definition of key concepts. Two is for you to also um, give a historical narration or situational analysis of these concepts. 
Three, we are now also going to look at the statistical analysis or situational analysis of this concept. So three in one. And so each concept comes with its own set of historical narrations. It comes with its own statistical analysis. And so for statistical analysis, we can probably say that, for example, menstrual hygiene according to the World Bank, menstrual hygiene according to this, according to that. Or females undergo their menstrual cycle. On average, this is the number, on average, or in total. Or in the year 2010, the World Health Organization recorded this number of females to undergo their menstrual cycle. All these forms under conceptual framework. And so, this is where our lecture will end. And I would like to acknowledge scholar, um, a lecturer from the University for Development Studies, Work Campus, now University of Business and Integrated Development Studies, by name, Dr. Haruna Umar, for enlightening us more about what this topic entails. And so, we hope to meet you in our next episode as far as this topic is concerned. My name is Abdurrahim Imoro, a representative from Infinite Research Institute. Thank you and have a nice day.